Hey everybody, this is Brad with the Instructional Tech Coordinator Team. We're here working on a GarageBand project on iPad, and we've just done a multi-track audio recording. Now, we want to get a little bit fancy, and we want to add some music into that. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how to add some music loops, and we're also going to talk a little bit about some editing preferences or some volume preferences that we changes that we can make. So. How do we add some of that fun background music? Because background music really can make a project that's just kind of dull and, and spoken into something a lot more interesting. Well, GarageBand, even the free version, comes with some loops that you can use. Now, students are always welcome to create their own loops. Um, there's a lot of great tools to do that with GarageBand. But I really, for most of the work that we do academically, we want them to focus on the writing portion and the speaking portion, as well as the editing portion of an audio project. Not so much the background music that they, they select, although that may at times be important. Uh, especially for things like bringing in certain tone or mood or sound effects to help tell their story. However, in this case, we're just going to use some pre-created background loops. Right up here, you can see that I have a uh, loop icon, and so we're going to go to that loop icon. Now, there are Apple loops are already created on your iPad for you, enough to make it an interesting, um, you can see I'm kind of flipping through, uh, an interesting selection. It doesn't have everything you'll need, but these are all copyright free and can be used in any project. Uh, most of them are without any sort of vocals. And so you don't have to worry about putting these projects out on the internet because now that we have Apple uh, tools in our hand and we have GarageBand for us, your kids can use these without concern about copywriting or even citing the source. So I'm going to get to the top of my loops there again. I also have some audio files. If students happen to have music on their um, iPad, they certainly can use that. There is no guarantee that that music is copyright free, and in most cases it is not. So if students choose to use that music, they do need to cite it properly in their projects, and you do have to worry about things like copyright. And so the same is true within the music app. That actually is most of their music, although audio files comes um, as they're working on different projects in GarageBand. So those are the things that they can use. We're, for this particular uh, piece, going to use Apple Loops. Um, and you'll notice here that you can search by different instruments. Some instruments are present, some are not. And there are different versions of uh, GarageBand. The district uses a free version that has uh, may have fewer loops than I have here, my paid-for version. That's just a choice that a, that a teacher or a student would make on their own. We provide the free version in the school district. So I'm going to go to my Apple Loops, and I am going to uh, just pick something that is drummy. All right, there we go. I've got some things that I can work with. Now all I need to do is take this piece. I can listen to it down here. All right, so I can tap on it, hear it. Here you can see I've got it going in the background. You might not be able to hear it, but you can certainly see it up here. Yes, that's exactly the one that I was shooting for. And so what I'm going to do is click and drag and hold it and drag over it. You'll see that this adds a third track to my project now. Now, I may or may not want this to run through the whole piece. And so understanding some of the basic editing tools that we used before um, may be helpful. I can also, over here on the end, when it's selected, I can shorten that particular piece. Let me see if I can get to it quick here. Actually, I might only be able to lengthen it, I'm sorry. There it is. I can drag it back and forth to shorten it or lengthen it. Just had to move it a little bit there to get to it. And these loops are really nice because um, they can run into each other. They can loop automatically, which means if it was only intended to be for six bars and I want to make it for nine, I can do that, and it works out very well. Now, the key is, with anything, we don't want our audio to be too loud um, or our music to be too loud over the top of our speaking. And so that's why I'm going to show you the next piece here. Right here in this area, I can drag out this little gray tab here. I can drag it in and out to hide. Let's see if I can get to it again. A little, a little touchy, but I can drag that in and out to hide different pieces. Let's say that one of our speakers is a little bit quieter than the other speakers. What I can do is turn up the volume on that particular track. 
and I can turn down the volume on another particular track. Or let's say I'm just working with one of them. I can mute different tracks. I'm hitting right here. I can mute different tracks, so I can just hone in on the audio from a single track and then turn the others back on when I'm ready for it. So I can turn down, up and down background music. I can turn up and down any of these tracks, which is one of the advantages to multi-track editing. But that's what allows us to do some of the basic um, adjustments you might need to do in an audio project. Also, in the previous video, I talked about how to record an audio project and how you would, uh, multiple, multiple tracks, and how you would hear the playback from a different um, track as you were recording. If that's not something you necessarily want to happen, here's a great little tip. I'm going to go ahead and mute all three of these tracks because the, the speaker in the next one doesn't need their prompting. He knows his lines. They're written for him. I'm going to add a new track, audio recorder. And because I've muted them, I can just begin speaking when I'm ready to do so. And we don't have to worry about recording any of that background sound. So here we go. You are going to find great ways to use both single track and multi track editing on the GarageBand iPad app for your classroom. So there we go. We're going to hop on over. And because I've muted all of the other tracks, I don't get any of their background noise. And therefore, I can drop it right there without much editing at all. Turn these back on and have a really powerful, clean, multi-track editing experience. And my final project is gonna mix down into something that sounds really nice and is well timed out. So that's how we do some additional adding of loops. It's also the way in which we can turn up and down volume on a track and nice tidbit is how to mute out other tracks when you're adding additional recording tracks. Hopefully that was helpful.